Blogging is new to the world, and one of the things that Kaufman likes to do is feature the entrepreneurial developments that are shaping or reshaping our world, and certainly in the area of ideas, in the discussion of the economics of the day, policy making, and so forth. The, uh, the writings of the economic bloggers has really taken off, and uh, we wanted to explore that phenomenon, and that's why we brought uh, some of the, uh, the most widely read bloggers in the country uh, here at Kaufman. Early in 2009, with the economy in the midst of its worst financial downturn in 50 years, the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation brought together an array of leading economics bloggers to attend the first of its kind Economics Bloggers Forum. It was a face-to-face -face meeting of thought leaders for the information age. Dave Wine started writing this thing on his website where he was just pointing to things that he'd read on the web that he thought were interesting and other people might enjoy. And that's what blogging is still for a lot of people, but there's a sort of convergence between traditional uh, journalism and blogging where the people who actually think and write are, are beginning to merge with the people who read and point. Business of information distribution is wildly democratized. There's a fantastic appetite for this information, so blogs and entrepreneurship and finance and innovation broadly can have incredible readerships, you know, half a million and more uh, unique readers, which is staggering if you think about it. The fact that you can get information through a blog in ways that, that you can't through traditional uh, media, and the speed, the currency of that information um, is wonderful. Plus it provides a very broad set of perspectives. People have a tendency to approach issues and they want to apply simple good versus evil narratives, heroes versus villains. And my writing on the blog is I deliberately try to subvert all of those expectations and to present points in some other way with some other emotional framing, almost just to trick people or force them to think about things in a new way again. And that to me is more the mission of the blog. It's a very welcoming, inclusive approach. It's really about ideas and trying to open up horizons. I'm Tim Kane, an economist here at the Coffin Foundation, where I write the blog growthology.org with Bob Lighton and Dane Stangler. Growthology focuses on research and insights into the connections between entrepreneurial activity and economic growth. Kaufman is known as the foundation of entrepreneurship, and we've long believed that blogging is just another example of a technology that causes what Joseph Schumpeter called creative destruction. This disruptive force generates tremendous economic growth with new innovations, new ideas, new jobs, but also at the same time displaces old jobs, old factories, and even entire industries. In fact, the day the forum was held, major U.S. newspapers were printing their last edition and U.S. newspapers were only one industry facing this transition. The overall rate of unemployment in the U.S. has been rising roughly half a percentage point every month in early 2009. We wanted to hold this forum with economic bloggers because we believe they have unique insights into what's causing this new global recession and the keys to economic recovery. The world of print journalism is also being revolutionized and uh, at the vanguard of this change are the bloggers. Uh, I don't think they're going to substitute for journalism, but they're going to redefine it. So the people that are blogging are part journalists, part economists, part agitators, and we're seeing a whole new art form, if you will, develop right before our very eyes. So this is our blog, Growthology, which is frankly a toddler compared to our revolutionary siblings like Marginal Revolution, Real Clear Markets, Dynamist, or Free Exchange. As you might suspect, few of the bloggers that came to the forum have ever sat down face to face to talk about the work they do. And recognizing this was a unique opportunity, we interviewed them on camera and captured their thoughts. It's probably fitting that we start with Mark Toma, a professor of economics at the University of Oregon. Way back in March of 2005, Mark started this blog, Economist View, which serves as a sort of grand central station sending out readers into the blogosphere with pointers to economic debates of the day. It's a very different medium where you put out things that are sort of half-baked for comment and you bat it around between all the blogs and you hope that between us all we can come up with a policy that, that's much better. And so the group think aspect of it I think is really important. If you've done a good job of writing it in a way that piques someone's interest and they link to you, 
and then you get the, the sort of cascading link uh, attention. Some blogs lend themselves more to conversation among other blogs, and there's a second dynamic of the conversation within the readership of the blogs in the comments section. I think there's almost a two-tier effect. You've got two different levels of discourse going on here. It is really hard to get over the notion that it, I can't say something wrong. And, but you're also pressed for speed, and so you have no choice but to sometimes go out with things that aren't fully developed. I've learned to say, you know, I'm not real sure about this, but here's my thoughts for the moment, and hopefully more will follow. There's an exponential growth in the kind of uh, reaction that you get to things online. Uh, you know, when they, say th when they say things can go viral very quickly online, they really mean it. It's a very valuable distributed communication channel for ideas, for both distributing your ideas and sharing your ideas, but then also reacting to other people's ideas and, and seeing the interaction and the evolution of those ideas as they, as they confront each other. So now we're in a, in a place where you can write something on the web and, and then see it quoted somewhere in 30 minutes. You know, and it's a little scary, <laughs> to be honest with you. It allows you to kind of present work in progress and say, you know, here's what we're thinking about, what do you think? It's not even like I'm saying I have the wisdom and I'm gonna give it to you. No, I'm saying, you know what, I have some questions. And here's the questions I'm thinking about and I kind of think it's leading me in this direction. But I don't know, I could be completely adrift on this thing. So what do you folks think? One of the segments of blogs that has emerged is the fairly serious economics blog. And that's why I became an economist because I just love the field so much and I want everyone to love it as much as I do. So it's a great outlet to do that. I don't worry about, well, this kind of post will draw in more readers. I think that's a big mistake. It makes the blog boring, least common denominator, less innovative, it's less entrepreneurial. The entrepreneurial act is just to do it and put your vision out there and you'll get the readers you deserve, I would say. Having a blog is like a dairy, and if you've never been a dairy farmer, it means there's no vacations, you never get a day off, and there's always work ahead of you. And then the next morning it starts all over again. You're expected to cover it and somehow make it intelligible for people. They come to you, it's not that they always agree with you, but they trust you in some way, and they want you to bring them to some new understanding of what's being done, and you're, you're violating their trust in a way if you don't do that on a regular basis. It's a kind of responsibility you take upon yourself, and if you don't take it seriously, you won't be viewed as an effective blogger. In 2008, a major recession began to unfold. Easy credit evaporates, a mortgage bubble bursts, oil prices, yo-yoed from $40 a barrel to up over 100 and back down again. But the most important economic variable to almost everyone is the unemployment rate. Since this recession began, American unemployment has skyrocketed faster than any post-war recession. Only two other recessions compare, 1974 and 1980. The main difference? Back then, the Federal Reserve was raising interest rates to stem inflation, essentially causing the unemployment rate to spike. This time around, Ben Bernanke's Fed slashed interest rates to nearly zero. The new president, Barack Obama, pushed for a fiscal stimulus of nearly a trillion dollars in deficit spending. Others wanted banking reform first. Some wanted tax cuts. We here at the Kauffman Foundation presented a slate of policies to promote entrepreneurship, even a special new visa for job creators. With time-worn principles called into question, economists began searching for answers. There's a period at the beginning of the car crash where you're just spinning around, right? And, 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 and it's the same thing in these sorts of downturns, you know? In the early stages of them, which sort of lasted less of a year, you're just running as fast as you can to just stay ahead of the news. The current sort of financial uh, implosion and economic crisis is, is, is not your run-of-mill recession. People knew stuff that wasn't true. Politicians knew that increasing home ownership was always good. Regulators knew that their capital regulations were working really well for banks. Uh, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, and AIG knew that they were writing ins insurance policies that uh, were never going to face claims. We knew that the Wall Street people were geniuses who were managing risk really well. There were all these things that we knew you know, in some sense, that weren't true. Bernanke didn't see it coming. Geithner didn't see it coming. The Fed didn't see it coming. The Bank of England didn't see it coming. 
bloggers saw it coming. Look back in the, in the summer of, of 2005, I did a post on my blog uh, where I called the peak of the housing market, real time. I thought it was an easy call. Time Magazine at that time came out, the cover of Time Magazine. Why were gaga over real estate? They used the word gaga right on the cover. There was more realistic talk out in the blog world. You've got pressures in the way that particularly popular parts are in the media to tell a happy story. Uh, people don't really like hearing bad news in business. I think the better things were, the more overly optimistic people became, and they looked to others and found supporting cues, which basically said, well, this guy is optimistic like I am, so that validates my view, and we all creeped further and further over the edge. And then we got to the point where we fell off. But in part, I think things have gotten so bad because they were so good for a long time.